G'day, I'm Matt Hearn. Two weeks ago, I presented a seminar at the Australian Institute of Management here in Perth, Western Australia. After the seminar, a couple of people came up to ask me private questions, and inevitably, a couple of those people told the very familiar story of having over the last 18 months seen their, their investments in their wealth go down with the share market, down, down, down. They got sick of that and so sold out to cash and have left their money in cash since then and have not been adding any more in the terms of investing in wealth creation. They were coming to me for a crystal ball recommendation of when they should get back in again. Maybe you can relate to that story. Maybe you too grew sick and tired of seeing the, your wealth go down and you sold out to cash. Or maybe you have been holding off on getting back in and, create, and advancing your wealth creation plan by investing actively in the share markets. If so, you face the very real predicament of getting in too late and missing out on the big gains. If it was an emotional decision that drove you to sell out, are you waiting for an emotional trigger to make you feel confident to buy back in again? If so, maybe take a leaf out of the behavioral finance book because what we know from behavioral finance is that we generally as humans feel the pain of a loss about twice as much as we feel the joy of a gain. So if you're waiting for that emotional trigger to get back in, it's quite likely that it'll take you twice as long to feel confident to get back in as it took you to sell out. And by which time the bull will have, been, will have bolted and you will have missed out on some of the great returns that are available in the early stages of recovery. So what I'd like you to do is rather than wait for that emotional trigger, is set some objective criteria to use as your triggers to get back in and start creating wealth in it by investing. But be wary about using the mass media as your trigger or as part of, a big part of your input of whether you should get back in again or not. So I'll tell you why. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been watching the uh, national mass media here in Australia, the papers, to see what they've been saying since early March 2009, where the markets hit um, their most recent low, which I hope will be the bottom, but I don't know. See, interestingly, at least the weekend Australian on uh, April the 4th, 2009, did have an article on the front page about the fact that the United States market, as measured by the Dow Jones Industrial Average, has gone up 22% since that March low. And the Australian share market has gone up 19% as measured by the S&P ASX 200. But that's not the front page of the paper, as is the case during the, the bear, where the, the blood sport of the mass media is all over the media. There's only a couple of articles over the whole weekend talking about this sign of stuff. And the interesting thing is most of the article, despite the headline, the most of the article actually talks about the downside risks, and it's quite likely that it wasn't the bottom, or maybe it wasn't. It's, it's emphasising the downside risk rather than presenting a balanced picture of all the upside opportunity that's been happening. So the mass media is highly likely to lag the market. The market will have well and truly recovered before the mass media jumps on the bandwagon and starts telling the good news stories as its main story. So please, whatever you do, do not rely on the mass media as the major input into driving your emotions about what's happening around and definitely not as your objective, as your criteria at all for getting into the market. What you need to do is set some actual own criteria that are appropriate to you, that are objective and that you can measure movements against that and use them as triggers to get back in. At the big picture level, set criteria based on what you need to be hearing in order to make you feel confident and set criteria about what you need to be seeing and observing to make you feel confident. Zooming into more detail, you might want to set criteria based on percentage market gains from a particular point that would act as your trigger. You might want to set um, a criteria based on volatility. Now the markets will always be a sawtooth going up and down like that, but how big is the sawtooth? That might be one of your criteria that you use. You might want to choose some economic data now, there's heaps of different economic data that you could use, some of the bigger picture macro level, some of the more detailed micro level. You pick some criteria that you think are good indicators for the economic recovery and the market recovery. Company profits might be another objective criteria that is published and can be measured and you can track. Or even interest rates, maybe in Australia or even overseas interest rates, they could be your criteria. But set objective criteria, not emotional criteria. Now, at this point, if you sold out based on emotions, you might be thinking, well, I don't know what criteria to set. 
and I don't know how to track them and I don't know anything about it. And to be honest, I can't be bothered to be doing that sort of tracking. Well, if that's why you're feeling, then outsource it. Get someone to help you take the emotion out of the decision and put some science, if you can call it, into the decision so that you can get back in. For example, maybe you could just pick one economist that you feel that you can trust and is a bit of an expert and follow what they do. Or maybe pick a basket of economists, not a huge basket, because otherwise the average will, will just go towards the mean, but maybe pick an av- a basket of economists and do whatever their average prediction is. Now, it's likely that the economists are not going to pick the bottom. They're not going to get it right. It's just too hard. It's only easy in the, with the benefit of hindsight. So, But what they will be able to do is it's likely that they will get you in earlier than if you relied on your emotions. So you won't miss out as much, you could say, is another way to think about it. Get in earlier than relying on your emotions by following, say, this basket of economists or external experts. But if you don't even know which economists to follow and which of their criteria that you should be measuring, but you still want to choose appropriate criteria that are appropriate to your circumstances, to you personally, and to your lifestyle goals, then what you need to do is outsource to a comprehensive strategic financial planner. They will help you by understanding you personally to set criteria that are right for you and your way you feel. And not only will they be tracking those criteria for you, but they'll be able to communicate in a way that makes you feel confident about the criteria. So it won't just be science telling you what to do, it'll also make you feel confident in the decision as well. So if you did sold out based on emotion or you're holding out based on emotion because you don't feel confident, then please take some of the emotion out of it, set objective criteria, track and measure those criteria and use objective criteria as your investment decision. In that way, you'll be able to benefit when the bull bolts and benefit from the recovery and get back some of those losses that perhaps made you so nervous. But you will be able to benefit, you'll get in earlier than relying on your emotional triggers and you can benefit from the recovery. Have a fantastic year. Please visit my website, www.matthern.com.au for some more free educational resources.